Thank you, Leila. Oh, I've got a passion for diving, so uh, I was prepared for this hard work. I went to the Great Barrier Reef to see an absolute wonder up there. Of, of course, the reef is under threat from a range of factors, and the whole health of its survival comes down to one event every year called uh, coral spawning. It's a natural phenomenon, and uh, I dived in to check it out. The Great Barrier Reef is Australia's most significant natural wonder. Stretching 2,600 kilometres along the Queensland coast, it's home to an incredible range of marine life. I was lucky enough to spend a few days diving the reef with some locals, the expert crew from Quicksilver. The view down here is incredible, the reef bursting with activity. More than 1,500 types of fish inhabit the reef and we managed to spot quite a few of them. I swam with sharks, bumped into an inquisitive potato cod, and I found Nemo and his friends, including Dory. The fish are all here because of this. Coral, which is actually an animal, or collection of animals, that come in every shape and size. There are over 400 types of coral on the reef, more than anywhere else on Earth. And it's these coral creations that are the backbone of the Great Barrier Reef. We're 33 kilometres east of Port Douglas on Agincourt Reef. Although it looks pristine from up here, it is under more and more threat every year from human factors and from environmental factors. And that's why this year's coral spawning is as important as any in its multi-million year history. Coral spawning is the way the reef rejuvenates itself. Without it, it would die. Coral spawning is a vital part of the coral's overall biology. Russell Hoare is a marine biologist who's been studying the reef for more than 20 years. A good spawning season each year is just providing new recruits to keep the system going. The spawn happens only once a year, a few nights after the November full moon. All these corals are bursting, ready to spew out clouds of tiny egg and sperm bundles. Think of it as sex in the surf. It's a phenomenon that not many people get to see. We're only probably talking about a couple of thousand people around the world have actually ever seen it. Predicting the spawn is an inexact science. The experts think we have chosen the right night, but there's no guarantee the coral will cooperate. All we can do is motor out into the darkness and hope the reef will be ready. Well, this is the moment of truth. Not only am I excited about this project, but of course, the whole feeling of diving at night. It's going to be pitch black down there. The only light that I'll have is what I carry with me. And it's scary because down there, things really do go bump in the night. Diving at night is very cool. Some fish are out to it, but many more are on the prowl. As for the coral, it wasn't really in the mood. Initially, there was no sign of spawning. You normally get about an hour and a half, two hours. So it's a pretty narrow window. But then, cue a little Barry White, the loving started in a big way. Eggs and sperm everywhere. Barry does that to you. It's like an underwater snowstorm. Uh, there's bundles of orange eggs will float up to the surface. They come out just streaming like little balls, which is quickly followed about half an hour later by a, a wispy white smoke that comes out, and that's the sperm. It's this middle-of-the-night mating game that will keep the reef thriving, adding another layer of coral to the world's largest and most spectacular reef. That is how to save the reef, just play Barry White more yes, often. Yes, that, yeah, that reef was going Certainly got everything off. in the mood. <laughs>